fellow Zimbabweans. I address you this morning following the successful holding of our country's summarized general elections from the 23rd to the 24th of August 2023. At the outset, I want to congratulate the nation for our peaceful conduct before, during and after the election process. This is who we are as Zimbabweans. We fought for the right to vote over a 16-year armed protracted liberation struggle. The democracy and the right we have exercised through our vote was paid for by the supreme sacrifice of many sons and daughters of our great country in I thus commend the nation across all provinces for the huge turnout in exercising this sacred right to vote. As the people of Zimbabwe, we have demonstrated that we are a mature democracy. In line with our constitution, we are collectively deepening and entrenching constitutionalism, the rule of law and good governance in our beloved motherland, Zimbabwe. We take pride in the fact that we are an independent and sovereign nation. I want, therefore, to congratulate all the national institutions involved in the conduct of these elections, in particular, the Independent Zimbabwe Election Commission. The elections have come and gone. I'm humbled by the trust and confidence that you, my fellow countrymen and women, have reposed on me to once again serve as president of our great country, Zimbabwe. There is much more work to be done. Together, as one united people, we shall continue on the growth trajectory witnessed over the last five years. No one and no place will be left behind. I thank most heartily all those who contested in these elections, in particular the presidential candidates. There are no winners or losers, but one united people of Zimbabwe. Thus far, we have shamed our detractors who wish to see us divided and in harmony. We shall forever remain a united, peace-loving and resilient people from Zambezi to the Popo, plum tree to retire, proudly singing one national anthem and one national flag. May I pay tribute to all our churches for promoting peace and harmony. I equally take this opportunity to thank the various election observer missions who have been witnessing our electoral processes without bias. As the sovereign state, we continue to call on all our guests to respect our national institutions as they conclude their work. My dear fellow Zimbabweans, countrymen and women, 
in this post-election period that we are now entering, let us remain vigilant and jealously guard the prevailing peaceful and tranquil environment in our motherland. That which unites us is much greater than that which could ever divide us. I further call on us all to return to work with a greater sense of purpose towards increased production and productivity across all sectors. We are a hard working people and the more success is ahead as we accelerate the attainment of Vision 2030, guided by our philosophy, Yeka Inova Igo Tomba Igo Namatikwa Nevenevaji Ilize Lakiwa Yibuswe Yiku Dekerwe Navani Kazi Wala God bless you God bless Zimbabwe I think. Thank you. 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 Thank for which, let me say, for my proper job, for winning the election, it was announced by, by Zek last night. Let me just ask uh, two questions of the What should be your key delivery goals in the next five years? May you introduce yourself, please? Okay, my, name, your organization. my name is Kosan Nure, I'm a journalist, with social media in Iran. My proper job, for winning the election, it was well announced by Zek. Two questions of the First one is, what should be your trust in the next five years? Given that uh, in these elections you were riding on what you did completely to this to, to this year. What should be your key variables going forward? And secondly, you have read reports from the AU and the SATA, as well as Commonwealth. That still suggests or to cast a pressure on these elections. What would be your comment to these reports? Sir? Thank you for congratulating me for winning this peaceful, transparent, and fair elections. My trust, by my new government, will be towards the consolidation of our food security in Zimbabwe. That's the primary objective. We want to continue to remain food secure, both in terms of corn or grain, as well as in our wheat production. As a matter of fact, uh, currently we believe we have excesses of both maize and wheat in the country. But I'm informed that uh, we are likely to have a, uh, a renewal climate attack this coming summer season. Because of that, we shall continue to pursue the increasing of irrigation in our country so that we have more acreage under irrigation we have, fortunately, abundant water bodies in the country. But we shall also continue to create more dams, as well as create more hectares under irrigation work. Under the current dams, we still have space to create more irrigation facilities. That is with regard to food security. Secondly, we are lacking that Zimbabwe is endowed with vast minerals. We shall continue to create 
an investment environment in the country to attract more and more investment, direct foreign investment in the mining sector, which we shall use to modernize and industrialize and to grow our economy. As you are aware that we are still under sanctions and our economic growth depends solely on our domestic and local resources. Third, we shall make sure that we spread development across the entire spectrum of our country, leaving no one and no place behind, so that every single household should be food secure and have access to both health and education. All these matters are very critical and are primary in our approach to developing our motherlands. As regards your second person, yes, I'm aware that some observer issues went beyond their call of duty and began interrogating legislation passed by our parliament. It is my view that every single sovereign country passes their legislation through their legislature. And the Zimbabwe is not an exception. And the legislature is composed of the people of this country. And it is through that uh, arm of the state where we get what we want as a country. I don't think it is in the uh, mandate of election observers to interrogate institutions of the civil government, the judiciary, the legislature, and governance. I believe that their mandate is to observe the transparency, uh, peacefulness, and fairness of the conduct of elections, which I'm happy to say. No one questions that. Any other question? Okay. Uh, uh, my name is Lavin Chamisa from Two City Church, and uh, once again, congratulations, Your Excellency, uh, on this victory. Uh, my question would be: uh, There are some some of your competitors who are disagreeing with this victory, and uh, they are saying that uh, uh, the election was was a sham. How do you respond to them? Uh, can I assure you that I did not conduct the elections? I competed with them in this race to win the elections, and I'm happy that I have won the race. I think those who feel the race was not run properly should know where to go to complain. I'm so happy that the race was run peacefully, transparently and a fairly broad daylight. And I'm happy that there was huge uh, turnout by our people. I'm sure that very few uh, people in this country will say that the elections were marked by any uh, violence because there was no violence at all. And I think this is what we should in Zimbabwe change and continue to maintain this is now shows how mature our democracy is. It is possible that even in a family not all children become uh, uh, obedient to the parents. The parents will do their best to teach culture and their children, but some kids will continue to do otherwise. But they still remain kids of the family. Thank you. I think you can take just one more person. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Congratulations. My name is Farai Mokutuya from China Global Television. Um, after you won the last election, you reached out to your competitors and invited them to be part of Poland. Uh, first of all, was that an effective? Did it add value that platform? And are you likely to? Are we likely to see the same going forward? Talking about the past, I'm very, very happy that uh, 
we created that question because the loving sons and daughters who love their country came to the table so that together we could share the structuring and uh, uh, a vision for our country as a family. And I'm so happy that Poland did contribute immensely to the progress we have achieved during the past five years. I believe that the same facility, when I formed my government, will be created so that again, as, son, as brothers and sisters of our motherland, we should be able to sit around our table and say, how do we best move forward? Our country, our economy, and our vision as a country, sharing together. Thank you.